Hello and welcome to the video for the new FAF Creative 3.0 sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. We're going to take an in-depth look at this machine. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos that I've done, you'll realize they're, they're fairly long videos because we really go through the machine completely. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at the new FAF Creative 3.0. Let's take a look at what I call the obvious features. Um, some of the obvious features of the machine is when you look at the top panel you see that there is just hundreds and hundreds of stitches built into this machine, uh, more than you would ever need. Um, Foff has some of the most beautiful stitches in the entire industry um, for a couple reasons. One is that they're a very high quality stitch quality machine, so their stitches the quality of the stitch is, I think, the best in the industry. Another reason is that Foff has a 9 millimeter stitch width, so that when it's doing its decorative stitches, it can go 9 millimeters side by side, which is the industry longest. Also, the feed on the machine, the stitch length goes longer than most machines at 6 millimeters. So when you combine all those factors together, um, the decorative stitching on the machine is just the industry best. Beautiful. And we'll do a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a little while. So some other obvious features is that Faf has a long arm, longer than most machines. Um, it is a 10 inch arm from the needle to the inside of the arm and a uh, fairly good height there so you can get big fat rolls of fabric. Um, also, Faf is now drop-in bobbins, which I absolutely prefer, and we'll get to the bobbins and how they're special here in just a little bit. Um, some other features, um, automatic needle threader on the machine here. You have one of Faf's crowning features, one of the best things about them, which is just incredible, and I'll turn the machine so you can see what I'm talking about. They're built-in walking foot. So the upper feed system is integrated in the machine. Um, they came up with this. They've had it in their machines for over 30 years. Um, one of the best features, and that is as simple as it is to turn it on or off. You leave the walking foot on for the majority of, of your sewing. Another um, fairly obvious feature is it is a nice um, high definition touch screen on it. I love this new touch screen because it's very responsive. Um, which we'll get into a little bit later, but I like the look of it, the design, the layout. I love that it um, looks very much like an iPhone just on its side. And when you touch the screen, um, it is that responsive like you're touching an iPhone. We're going to talk a little bit about the front buttons on the machine. Um, so you have a layout of buttons and we have our touch screen. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what each button does so you'll get an, a good understanding on what happens when we touch these buttons. So one of my favorite features on the machine, absolute 100% favorite feature is the no lifter lever for the presser foot. The presser foot works completely automatic. It is really hands-free sewing. So anytime you hit the foot control on the machine, the presser foot drops down. Now if you wanted to manually raise and lower the presser foot, you do have buttons here. So if you push the up button, the presser foot raises up. Now if you touch the up button a second time, it goes to an extra high position. This is where you used to grab and really pull hard on that lever to get the foot up as high as you, could, you can. Um, instead of doing that, you just hit the button a second time, it comes up to the absolute highest position. Now anytime you hit the foot control, the presser foot drops down. But if you want Two, you can use the manual down button from any height. You can just hit the button and the presser foot drops all the way down. Now when you hit the down button a second time, it has a feature which I kind of I call hover. So when I hit the button a second time, the foot just barely comes up, just the tiniest amount. This is where you used to raise and lower your presser foot lifter lever to get your needle just where you want to start sewing. Instead of doing that, you hit the down button a second time, the foot just barely hovers above the fabric. You can line up your needle just perfectly where you want to start sewing. When you get it right where you want it to be, just hit the foot control, foot drops down the rest of the way, and you start sewing. So that's how the needle up down buttons work. Now below that we have our start stop button. Start stop is where you can sew with or without the foot control. So anytime I hit this button the machine will start sewing and I hit it again and the machine will stop. Now this start stop button is different than the start stop button that you see on most machines. Um, and the reason is on large majority of machines in the industry that have start stop buttons, in order to use the start stop button, you actually have to reach on the side of the machine and unplug the foot control. 
Now you don't have to do that on FOF, and one of the great things is if you use the start stop button, anytime you touch the foot control, the foot control instantly takes back over. So if I hit the start button and the machine starts running, and if I touch the foot control with my foot, it just took back over. So it's great. It's great for if you're doing free motion quilting because you can set the speed where you want the machine. You can use the start stop button to get the machine running. It stays at that same consistent speed. And then when you want to take back over on your free motion, you don't have to reach for any buttons. You just push your foot on the foot control and your foot controls instantly took back over. So it's a little different than the way other machines do it. And it is so much better. It's really, really great. Okay. Down from that, this silver button right here is exactly what you think it is, it's the reverse button. So when you're sewing and you touch the reverse, the machine sews backwards. When you let go, it comes back forward. Now when you're not sewing and you hold this button down, it'll turn it on to um, permanent reverse and you'll see the light light up to let you know that you're permanently now in reverse until you hit the button again to make it come back forward. So two different ways the reverse works. This button right here, scissor button, one of my favorites. I hit the scissor button, it's gonna cut the thread and it's gonna raise the foot for me automatically. Every time I use the scissor button, it cuts and it brings the foot up. Love how the scissor button works. A scissor button actually has, it works two different ways too because if I'm doing a pattern, so I'm doing like a little heart and if I'm sewing where the needle is still moving, and I hit the scissor button, it's gonna finish that pattern completely, do a little locking stitch, and then cut and raise the foot, all completely automatic. But anytime I'm sewing and I stop the needle from moving and I hit the scissor, then it just instantly cuts. So great, works two different ways. The button above it is a fix button, so it locks our stitch for us automatically. So anytime I hit this button, it will lock my stitch and then start sewing. Um, if I get to the end and I want to hit this, that fix button, it's going to lock the end for me. So this is an automatic locking feature. This button right here takes me back to the beginning of any pattern that I'm on. So if I go to a stitch that is maybe a little heart or something decorative, um, say I'm doing this little butterfly stitch. So if I'm halfway through my butterfly stitch, and I wanted to turn and go another direction, I needed it to restart the beginning, I can touch this button, which would bring me right to the very beginning of the stitch. So pattern restart. It's also good for doing a name. So if you're doing a whole, um, say you're writing out a quilt label, um, anytime you hit that button, it'll bring you right back to the beginning of the name. So pa pattern restart there. This button right here is our speed control button. So when I hit this button, I'll go back to a regular straight stitch. Anytime I hit my speed control button, it turns the speed down on the machine. So that means I can use my start stop button and it goes at whatever speed the machine set at. Or if I hit the foot control, it'll only go as high as that speed that I have set. Now when you look at the speed control button, you'll notice there's a little triangle in the corner of that button. Anytime you see a triangle in the corner of a button on a FOF, it means there's another menu there and you have to hold the button down and a menu will pop up on the screen. What this is is a scale that you can bring the speed to whatever setting that you want. So once you set it where you want, then the machine will remember that's where you want it set. So if you turn it off and then if I turn it back on, it'll remember and go back to that spot that I had um, selected. So that's some of the physical buttons. Then we have the touch screen, um, which we're gonna do a little bit more in detail in a second. Another, some other things that I just wanna point out real quick. I have the embroidery unit off the machine. Currently it's on, onto the side of it. And I have the standard accessory box on the machine. So the accessory box is what holds all of your feet and knickknacks. And there is a front and back section. The reason why I'm pointing this out is people don't always realize there's a back compartment. And this is where your, um, some of your larger tools are kept or your um, automatic buttonhole foot, which we'll do shortly is stored and it's not unusual for somebody to call and say they didn't get their buttonhole foot because they didn't realize there's a back section to their accessory box. In the front section, you will have the top of the tray is where all of the feet go. It's what holds your bobbin. This little rubber bobbin holder is the best. I mean, 
the best in the industry. It's great. It's rubberized so that you can put any type of bobbin, pre-wound or regular in there, and it holds the bobbin tails from making a big gnarly mess in there. So it's it's great. So underneath this tray is another compartment where you can keep some larger accessories. I have the um, flash drive here that the embroidery part of the machine uses um, and some other accessories store under there. So that's how the accessory box works. And I really like this accessory box because when you push down on the front, it actually locks so that it doesn't just flop open. So if I actually had it off the machine and I went whoops and I tilted it, everything's not going to fall out on the floor. I'd like to show you a bit about how this machine threads and also how to wind the bobbins and put the bobbin in the machine. And um, the nice thing with the bobbins on this machine is that they're special bobbins meaning that they will only fit in the machine the proper way. You cannot put the bobbin in the wrong way on this machine. It just simply doesn't fit. Now, the bobbin only will fit on the bobbin winder the proper way. So I cannot put the bobbin on the bobbin winder upside down. It just simply won't go on. It only will fit on the proper way. When I try to put the bobbin into the bobbin case, it will not fit in upside down. It only fits in the right way. So it's real foolproof bobbin. To wind the bobbin, it's, it's quite simple. Um, you go from the spool, and you go under the first metal thread guide like you would if you were threading the machine, till you get to this button guide right here. You go over the top portion of the button guide, and then you got two little guides that stretch over to where the bobbin winder is. Just wrap the thread around the top of the bobbin. Now you have to wrap it around the top of the bobbin because there's these special little grippers in there that grip the thread to make it wind um, immediately. So you can either wrap it around the top where the grips are or there is a hole in the bobbin where you can stick it from inside um, and out of that hole. Um, I kind of like the hole but I, I do it both ways. And then you push the bobbin winder over to the right hand side and then on the screen you have the ability to adjust the speed on which the bobbin is going to wind and then you can use the start button to start the bobbin winding. We're not going to actually wind this bobbin right now. Um, so that's how you wind the bobbin on the machine when you push the bobbin winder back over. Um, the, the display uh, goes back to normal. So that's winding the bobbins. Now, to thread this machine, a couple things you'll notice. You'll notice that the spool pin both stands vertically and horizontally. Now, I have a big spool of embroidery thread on the machine to play with right now. But one thing you also want to set up on, a, on your sewing machine is the first thing you do is make sure on your FOF that you have your large spool cap on your spool pin and then your felt pad. Those go on first and they're pretty much going to live on the machine forever. This gives it a surface for the spool to sit on so that if when you do use them in the vertical position, it has a nice base for the thread to spin on. Now you'll notice that most machines in the industry today use the spools in the horizontal position. It's the recommended position to run thread. And the reason is when it's horizontal, the thread can just fall off the end without having to rotate the spool around. So your thread tensions are more consistent when your thread is laying down horizontally. So when you have them down horizontally, you have to make sure you put a little spool cap on the, the end and they give you three different size spool caps so you can match it to the spool of thread that you're working with. So you go under the first metal thread guide and it just pulls in. I always hold the thread like I'm flossing my teeth so I can kind of pull it in tightly. You go underneath the button guide, straight down the front of the machine, all the way back up to the top. Now when you go back up to the top, there's a metal lever in here called the take-up lever. It's the lever that moves up and down, up and down, up and down when the machine sews. You have to get the thread around that lever and pull it to the front of that lever. That is one spot you want to guarantee that you have the thread in on all sewing machines. Anytime you miss that lever or you do not put the thread around the take-up lever, you're just going to get big, ugly, gnarled messes um, down in your bobbin area. And that's true on all sewing machines. So when you bring it down, back up, make sure you get it clicked on the take-up lever. Then you come straight da back down the front of the machine and you got a little wire guide right at the needle clamp itself. So I'm going to bring the camera down and I'm going to show you how to use the needle threader. To use the needle threader, just hold the thread off to the side and when you bring the needle threader down, this first little hook piece should grab the thread 
You push the needle threader down all the way until it sticks a little wire through the eye of the needle. Then you put the thread into the slot on the other end of the needle threader and have very light tension on it. Not much at all, but enough to keep the thread um, taut. And you bring the thread back and in a little bit of an upward direction and then the little wire that's going through the eye of the needle will pull a loop behind the back end of the needle and then you can just pull the thread tail through the rest of the way. And that's how you use the needle threader. Put the thread under the foot and you got the little side cutter on the side of the machine. To put the bobbin in the machine, you first remove the bobbin cover just by sliding it forward. Take our full bobbin and you just drop it into the bobbin case and again it will only fit in there the proper way. Now what I do is I put one finger on the bobbin so that I can pull the thread tight with the other hand. I slide it until it clicks in to the little uh, tension area at the base of the bobbin case. That's that little metal slot right there. So you pull the thread in until it clicks in. Bring the thread to that first little point there down to the second arrow right here where the thread cutter is and it cuts off the thread tail. Then you can take your bobbin cover and you can slide it back on and click it in. So now on this machine, because it cut off the bobbin tail, you do not rotate the hand wheel to pick up the bobbin thread. Do not do that. You just simply put the fabric in and start sewing. The machine will pick it up on the very first stitch. Let's talk a little bit about this great touch screen. So right now we're in regular sewing mode and what we see on the screen is we see the stitch that we're doing. Um, one thing I can tell you too about the stitch on the screen, it's always real size. So between this line and this line is exactly nine millimeters. That is the stitch width of the sewing machine. So if I go and I grab a, another stitch, um, something, um, something a little different here that has a pattern to it. So when we change it or adjust it, it's going to always change on the screen to show you exactly what you're going to get when you stitch it out on your fabric. So this is real size. Now we have buttons next to it. Um, this one says 5.0 currently. Um, this is our stitch width button. So it determines how wide the stitch is going to be. If we're on a regular zigzag stitch, it would determine how wide the zigzag is going to be. Now the one next to it is how long the stitch is. So it's our stitch length. As we make that longer, you'll see the stitch grow on the screen so you know exactly what you're going to get. So that's the stitch length. Next to that is the tension settings. This machine has fully electronic tension, so it's setting the tension for you continually. If you wanted to change the default tensions, you can do it right here on the screen just by going on plus or minus. It's not a permanent change, you're just changing it for as you're sewing that particular stitch out. Um, the machine is set pretty well from the factory. You may want to adjust it if you're working with a specialty thread, so something very much out of the ordinary. You can go in and make some little adjustments there. When you're on a straight stitch, you have the ability to move your straight stitch to any needle position you want just by using what would normally be your zigzag width. When you're on a straight stitch it moves the needle over and you can see it move over on the screen. The little green X you see when you're on any of the stitches that the machine does kind of shows you where that stitch is going to start so you know your starting position for that stitch. At the top of the screen, it's always going to tell you the recommended foot to use for the stitch you're on and whether or not for the, what you're doing, if you should have your built-in walking foot on or off. So right now on this stitch, it's recommending our 1A foot. And if you look at the feet, all the feet have letters and numbers right stamped into the foot. So it makes it easy for you to know what foot the 1A is. And so the symbol next to it is our built-in upper feed system turned on. When you're on a different stitch, uh, we'll do something a little bit more decorative and then you're going to see how it's going to recommend um, a completely different foot. So it's going to recommend the 2A foot. The upper feed symbol is gone. We do not use it on this stitch, so we turn it off and it because it's a decorative stitch, it would recommend that you use a piece of stabilizer underneath the stitch. And that's what that symbol is there. Let's go back to a regular straight stitch. This button next to it here, 
That is our free motion button. Anytime we want to free motion our stitch, you just touch this button and you can select what type of free motion foot you want to use and the rest of the machine gets set up for you to do free motion quilting, which we'll play around with in a few minutes. Over on this side here, um, we have a few options here. We have our file folder. This will take any stitch that we have on the screen and put it into a special menu for us, a saved menu. So if we took our straight stitch and we moved it over and we made it longer, and this is how we like to straight stitch on our, on our machine or on the project that we're working on, we can take that stitch then and save it into our menu so that we can get back to that stitch perfectly whenever we want to retrieve it. Now, the one next to it, down here, is one of my favorites. It's the automatic locking feature on the machine. And we're going to actually stitch some of these, these functions out, but I'm just going to explain what it is here first. The automatic locks is where you can tell the machine you want it to always lock the beginning of your stitch, you want it to always lock the end, and you can tell it to, after you lock the end, please cut and raise the foot for me automatically. So it's all done by just checking these three boxes. Or you can say only lock the end for me. However you want it, it's very customizable. Really easy, it's one of my, out of all the machines in the industry, this has the easiest, best automatic locking stitch. Now below that is a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun in this menu. Um, this is my tapering stitches. Uh, we can do mitered corners or tapers and we'll play with this in a few minutes. We can do pattern sewing. Um, it's, they call it like a patchwork. Um, it's where it remembers what you've sewn and it'll repeat it as many times as you want. And we'll play with that so you have a better understanding of what I mean by that, but it's a lot of fun. Below that is our programming screen. Um, so I can go and get, oh, I can get a turtle and I can put it with a butterfly for whatever reason, but you can combine two different stitches together in programming screen. You can do more than just that and we'll play with this in, in a few minutes. The one below it here is another one of my favorites. It's Stitch Editor. I've done a lot of neat stuff in Stitch Editor, which I can uh, show you a, a few samples of some things that I've done. This is where you can actually create your own stitches. Stitch Editor is great. Um, so I'll give you a little demonstration. Um, when you hit this button, it brings a stitch onto the screen. Um, that stitch you can move, change, shape in any way you want. This one is just a repeat, so it'll repeat whatever section of stitches that you want. So if you made a little twisty turn and you wanted to highlight a section of the little twisty guys and have it repeat that section, I can go and I can um, highlight it and have it repeat it for me by hitting that repeat. Um, you can go back and I can take little stitches and tweak them and change them if I didn't like the way one, one section was. I can do little adjustments to it. Um, I can also highlight all my stitching and turn it into a triple stitch if I want it to be bolder. And then it doesn't look like anything right now, but that's the stitch I just created. Really, um, really easy, a lot of fun. If I wanted to, I'm just going to delete everything I have on the screen, I can bring in an existing stitch. Let's go find, let's find something like this little heart. So anytime I bring in an existing stitch, you can see how it's plotted out. Each stitch is plotted out. I can change existing stitches in the machine. I can alter them. I can move them around or I can delete sections. So if I wanted to, I can go up and um, I'll just highlight a section of the stitches. So this is my highlighter button. So if I touch that and I scroll along the stitches, it'll highlight that section of stitches. And then I can do a couple things. I can hit my triple stitch button if I wanted to make it bolder and triple it over, or I can hit my trash can and it, remove it. So I just completely changed this design. I removed that whole section of it. Um, so you can play around with existing designs in Stitch Editor. Things that I've done, um, I've actually made my own signature in Stitch Editor so that I can sign my work. I actually think I have it in the memory of this machine. Um, I was playing around at a quilt show that I went to recently. Doesn't look like much, but when I stitch it out, it's my signature. Um, it's kind of fun. I, it didn't take me very long to do it, and it was a, a lot of fun doing it. 
Um, so Stitch Editor is great fun. I also made a really neat hand looking stitch in Stitch Editor. Um, it looks, it, I do it a certain way. I use a real thin thread called bottom line. Looks great but not to talk about <laughs> different things that I've done. Uh, let's get back to what the machine does. Um, so that's that Stitch Editor um, there, but you can have a lot of fun with that. Over on this side of the screen, we've got a few menus. Um, we have our toggle between sewing and embroidery here. So the presser foot is sewing mode, and we're already in there. The hoop will take us out of sewing mode, and it'll stick us into embroidery mode, so we can do all of our embroidery editing which we will get to in a few minutes, so we're not going to fool around in there yet. Down here, this menu here looks like little boxes on top of each other. This is our all of our stitches. This is where all of the stitches in the machine live. Now, there's a lot of stitches, hundreds and hundreds of stitches, so they don't have them just thrown at you in one big menu that you have to scroll through. They have them broken, broken up into sections, and that's what this little button down here is. So we have different categories. We have utility stitches, quilting stitches, needle art stitches, decorative stitches, sewing techniques, and personal menus. Then for every menu that we're in, we have submenus. So essential stitches, overcasting stitches, buttonhole stitches. Um, so this is uh, kind of a logical way that they've put the hundreds of stitches um, into the machine so that you know where to go to get to the stitches. You're not sitting there trying to um, hunt down stitches between all these different pages of, of stitches. Now when you select a stitch, you're going to know the location of the stitch. It's going to tell you at the bottom of the screen that this is in menu one, submenu one, stitch number one. So 1.1.1, that tells you where the stitch is located in the machine. Below the menu buttons is our tools button. The tools is where all the different settings and different things that the machine does, um, it's all in there. Um, jump stitch cuts when it's embroidering, we can turn that on and off. We can do a, a lot of different different things. If we want to know what uh, version, software version our machine's running that's in our, our little eye tab, how much memory of the machine that we've used, um, says we're at 6% right now. You can put designs into the machine type of thing. Um, so that's all in your tools menu. Now the question mark below that, this question mark is awesome. Um, I wish all machines had this little question mark. There's certain machines that we sell at the store that you feel, I always feel a little lost and I have to take out a book to try to get my question answered. And if they only had this question mark button, I could get my answers answered right at the machine. So what this question mark does is if you're on a screen and you don't know what an icon does, I can touch the question mark and then I can touch the icon and it'll tell me exactly what it does. So it'll answer anything about any icon or anything that you touch on the screen. It'll tell you exactly what that um, is used for. Question mark button is a great, great helper. Okay, over on the very far right hand side of the screen, we have our mirror images. Let me grab a different stitch so that you can see just how the mirror images work. I'm gonna find something that's kind of directional. Here we go. So the top mirror image button is going to flip flop it like this, left to right. You'll see it change on the screen. The one below it mirror images the other way. So it's either this way or it's this way. So top to bottom or left to right. Um, the icon below that is our trash can button, which it's not going to do anything right now. But we're in Stitch Editor, or if we're in Programming Screen and we're combining stitches together, you can use your trash can to delete. Okay, so that's the basic layout of the screen. When we're in our Stitch Menu button and you, you have these little side tabs, um, you have our, all of our sewing machine stitches. Then below that, we have our alphabets. So alphabets, if we select one of our font styles, um, I'm just going to trash can this because it remembered what I had last programmed. Then we can write whatever we want, uppercase, we can switch to lowercase, and you can write your name. You can bring a sewing stitch down there if you want to put a sewing stitch with it. So if I want to go into my stitch menu and find uh, maybe a little heart, let's go find a cutesy little heart. Somewhere there's a little heart for me. Um, so if I want to pick one of these little hearts, so I can do my name with a heart. Um, so that is all when you tab into the alphabet 
screen, which is the alphabet tabs, which is in your menus there. Okay, so let's have a little bit of fun now, enough talking, and we'll do a little bit of the sewing functions that the machine does. Um, I talked about how it automatically locks the stitch. It's one of my favorite locking stitches. So we're going to go ahead and we're on a regular straight stitch, and I'm going to turn on my beginning lock, my end lock, and just because I'm going to have it automatically cut for me. So I've turned those three functions on. All I have to do at this point is start sewing. The first thing that it does is it locks my stitch automatically. Now when I'm ready to finish my seam and I get to the end, all I have to do is touch my reverse button. It is going to lock the stitch automatically. It's going to cut and it's going to raise the foot all completely automatic. So you can see the beginning lock there and the end lock. So now when I start sewing again, it knows that I'm ready to start at the beginning of a seam again. So it's going to lock and it's going to sew. When I get to the end, touch the reverse, lock, cut, raise the foot. Completely automatic. So that is all done here just by turning on those three icons there. Now when I use that, let's say I had to do 50 of the same little thing, 50 pleats or 50 something. And what I can do is I can have it lock the beginning, lock the end, cut, raise the foot, and I can go into the icon below it where our patchwork function is and I can tell it to remember what I first sewed and then repeat it for me. So now when I start sewing, it's going to lock the beginning, it's going to sew to whatever length I want, touch the reverse, have it lock the end, have it cut and have it raise. Now it knows that I've sewn 21 millimeters. It's going to repeat that every time I hit the foot control. I don't have to do anything else. I can do this as many times as I want. See that? It'll just repeat, repeat, repeat. This is like you're in production. I uh, love those features together, um, really, really nice, exact same length every single time. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So that's kind of how the automatic locking feature works. Now one thing I want to point out too is when you're doing the automatic locks, and if you look at them, you'll notice they're kind of a big, hardy, hefty lock, really nice and strong. Well, quilters don't always like such a big, bold lock, sometimes they like a smaller, more delicate locking stitch. So when you look at your quilting menu at the very top of the machine, you'll see there's a second straight stitch. And I've been asked, why is there two straight stitches? Why is there a straight stitch in our normal menu one and a second straight stitch in menu two, our quilting menu, because they seem to be exactly the same. I'll show you the difference. When we go into our quilting menu and we select stitch number one, it locks in a completely different way. So when I sew this stitch, it does a very different kind of lock that has more of that quilting appeal. It is a finer, more delicate lock. Can you see that? Can you see how at the beginning you can't really see it? But on these, you can see a big, bold, hefty lock. So this one is designed specifically for you quilters out there. So that's the automatic locking stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off now. And now they're off. Now below that is one that I have a lot of fun with is tapered stitches and mitered corners. So let's go ahead and pick a fun stitch. You can taper any stitch that the machine does outside of a straight stitch because there's really nothing there to taper. But we're going to go find a nice wide stitch. So we'll go to... Oh, what stitch do I like to do? I like to do menu two, um, two seventy four and stitch number eleven. It's this. Uh, the reason why I like to do this this stitch is it's really uniform. It's really wide. It's um, it's an easy pattern that you can see really well um, how it tapers and what I'm doing. But again, you can taper any stitch. Some of them look kind of funky when you taper them, um, but any one you can put these tapered edges on. So what we're going to do is we're going to touch our little icon there with our tapered stitches. It's the same icon we used when we did our patchwork. 
But on this side, you have these little icons that'll do 45 degree tapers. Now there's more tapers, which I'll show you in a minute, but let's play with these 45s for a second. So now that I've turned, off the be turned on the beginning taper and the end taper, all I have to do is start sewing. It'll immediately do a taper at the beginning of that stitch. It'll sew whatever length I want. And when I'm ready to finish my end taper, I can just touch my reverse button to tell it I'm ready for it to finish. It'll taper the other end. And I'm gonna put my needle down. And I'm going to angle a little bit. And then start sewing. And I touch the reverse and it'll finish off. Okay, so now let's take a look, see what we did. See how I did a mitered corner on that stitch? So it's 45 degree angles, and I turned it 90 degrees and got a really nice mitered corner. So that's, that's how you taper on, on the stitches, a lot of fun. Now, remember how I told you earlier that anytime you see a triangle at the corner of a button, it means there's another menu if you hold the button down. So let's hold this button down and you'll see our taper menu pop up with all different kinds of tapering options. So let's pick a 60 degree center justification taper for the beginning and we'll pick it for the end. And you'll kind of see on the screen what it's gonna do, but we'll stitch this out. So it starts with the beginning taper. When I'm ready to finish my end taper, I just touch the reverse. So that's my 60 degree beginning and 60 degree end taper. And then to turn it off, just uncheck. And then we're back to normal. Okay, so now we have our programming icon which has the A, the heart, the B, which tries to show putting two combinations of stitches together. I'm just gonna hold my trash can down, which is gonna delete everything that I had previously done on the screen. So now I can go and I can bring two different stitches together. So let's go find two that work pretty well together. And we can combine any combination of stitches that we want, but I'm gonna go try to find something cute. I kinda like to put the um, house with the tree, because that works pretty well together. So I put them together. If I made a mistake, I can just touch the trash can button one time, which would delete the last one I was on. But I actually want that back, so let's go get the house back. So I want this to be a border, so I want it to be a continual repeat. So I'm just gonna hit the check mark. It'll bring, her on, bring it on the screen. You can see the house, the tree, the house, the tree. We'll go ahead and stitch this out. And you can see on the screen it's recommending the 2A foot. And I would highly recommend you always going by the machine's recommendation. It knows the best. I'm going to touch my scissor button because whenever you touch the scissor button while you're sewing a pattern, it'll always finish that pattern, lock the stitch, and cut automatically. So then you can see you got the little house tree, house tree, house tree. And I don't know if you're noticing, but the stitch quality on this machine is beautiful. I actually did a quilt show over the weekend where I brought this machine. And you have a little bit of time when you're working these shows. So I went through and I sewed out a bunch of the decorative stitches using this actually same spool of embroidery thread. Let me grab that and I'll show you what they look like. This is just some of the stitches that the machine does here. So this is on this exact model machine, this exact machine as a matter of fact, sewn out over the weekend at the quilt show. And I don't know if you can see on, on camera just how beautiful these stitches are. And look at them on the backside. Um, 
I know you don't usually look at the backside of decorative stitches, but Foff maintains some of the best stitch quality. I think the best stitch quality in the entire industry. I also work on sewing machines, so I have my hands in every machine out there. And I also sell multiple brands machines, and I am tell you, nothing can touch Foff's decorative stitches or their stitch quality. It's just incredible. Here's a few more that I did here. Just see how beautiful they are. Nine millimeter stitch width, six millimeter stitch length. Just the combination of those things just makes for absolutely beautiful stitches. And I was talking about Stitch Creator, how I made my name. Um, I actually have a little one that I stitched out at that same quilt show over the weekend, so I'll show it to you. This is, my, this is what my signature looks like. I mean, it looks a little goofy, but my signature isn't straight and perfect. Um, the machine has beautiful fonts when you want to stitch out you know, fonts, but this is different. This isn't me just stitching out the built-in fonts in the machine. This is me going into the Stitch Creator mode and actually creating my exact signature that I can use to sign my work. So this is really, if I was to write it out on a piece of paper, what my signature looks like. Okay, so let's um, do a little bit of alphabets now. So to do alphabets, we're gonna go to our menu button. We're gonna touch our little alphabet tab there, and we're gonna select the style of alphabets that we wanna do. Um, you can see there's multiple styles in the machine. I'm gonna put the out, pick the outline alphabet. I kinda like this one. I'm going to hold down my trash can just to delete what I have on the screen. Now, the only reason it's remembering what I had last done on the screen is because the machine is still on. If I turn off the machine and turn it back on, everything that I had done in the programming screen, it goes away unless I saved it. Um, so, But I just trash can that because that's what we were last playing with. And I'm going to write my name. I always do my name because I can remember that. It's easy. Um, so. We have J. Now, this font has only uppercase and numbers and symbols. Um, if it had lowercase, I can switch to lowercase by hitting this button here, and you can see how it goes between symbols and numbers. But this is all, all uppercase fonts, so J, O, H, N. Now, I can do this a couple different ways. I can sew this as a repeating pattern, so it would be John, 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 or I can have it just do John and stop. So now I'm going to do that. I'm going to have John and I'm going to touch my scissor button and it's going to tell it the machine that I want it to stop and cut for me automatic. Now I can also write a whole sentence. So if I'm making a quilt label, I can write, you know, made with love for so and so. Uh, so you can write a lot of different characters. If I needed a space, um, this is our little space icon there. So when I write the name and I'm ready to stitch it out, um, it's easy. All I do is hit either my start stop button or my foot control. I'll use my start stop button. It's not like in the past where you had a machine that did alphabets and there was just a lot of hoops you had to jump through, the program function repeats and all these different things. Um, it can't be any easier now. You just touch your alphabet button and it comes up like a keyboard, type what you want and just hit your foot control. Very, very simple. Okay, so this is done. And you can see um, my name there. So one really cool feature on the machine is if you took a lot of time and you made maybe a custom quilt label. Um, you say, you know, made for so-and-so. And you can make that label one time and you can save it into your little folder icon up here. When you click that icon, you can select an empty spot to save to and then your name gets saved there. So now to get the name back, so if you're coming to the machine later on and maybe you have a different, um, a different stitch up on the screen, something totally different, and you wanted to get back to where your name is, you can go to your stitches. And so you can see we have our stitch me menus, uh, you know, our regular, our quilting stitches, decorative. Well, you have this big heart here. That is where your personal menu of stitches are. And you can see my one I just saved in there. And I can bring it back really quick and easy. So the, the fonts turn out beautiful when sewn. Of course, there's a whole nother way to do embroidery fonts. And we're going to get into embroidery here shortly. OK, let's do buttonholes now. Um, Foff does awesome buttonholes. Foff, I would say 10 years ago, buttonholes were lacking a little bit. Great sewing machines, but buttonholes, eh. Today, their buttonholes are incredible. They've got this really neat buttonhole 
foot. I think they call it their Sintermatic buttonhole foot. Um, essentially what it does is it makes perfect buttonholes. It measures out the exact size needed for every button. It repeats it perfectly. It does the perfect buttonhole. And I'll show you how this works on the machine. So we have to attach it, and it attaches just like any of our other feet do. To remove our feet, we just push down on the front of the foot and it pops off. You take your buttonhole foot and you just pop it right on. Now if you notice on the buttonhole foot, there is a little plug-in, looks like a headphone jack, and there's a little spot kind of behind the needle threader by the lighting um, where you can plug that headphone in. Now for a little while, you'll probably kind of turn upside down and look to see where it is to plug it in. I can plug it in just, just by feel. It's pretty easy to, to find the spot. So once you have the foot plugged in. Now we have to go find a, a buttonhole stitch. So we go to our stitch menu here and we're going to pick our buttonhole categories of stitches and you can see there's lots of different buttonholes to choose from um, but I'm just going to pick a pretty common buttonhole. Now on the screen we see 16. That is the size of the button. So we can make that bigger we can make that smaller. You can see the buttonhole changing on the screen. If you needed to hold a button to it to see if you're um, at the right size, you can. Also, on the lid of the machine up at the top, on the right-hand side is a little millimeter ruler that you can hold a button to also to see what size that button is. So you can select the size that you need for your button. And then on your foot, there's a little red arrow here. That arrow lines up with a notch right in this foot. That is going to always be your starting position. That is where you start. Once you have that lined up, just start sewing. What it does when it does buttonholes on this machine is it always feeds both columns in the same direction. This gives you the best looking, most professional looking buttonholes. It's also going to lock the stitch, cut, raise the foot completely automatic. And because the machine uses electronic tensions, it's, all, it's also setting the tensions properly to give you the nice, best looking buttonhole. Can you see that buttonhole stitch? And then I can repeat that stitch as many times as I want. Just hit the start button again and it'll do that exact buttonhole stitch again. So buttonholes are very, very easy on, on this machine. We'll let this one finish. You can also do manual buttonholes on the machine, not using the Sintermatic buttonhole foot. It comes with a, another manual buttonhole foot that just pops on, and then it kind of does it like machines did it in the past, where it sew one side, you hit the reverse, sews the top, comes back forward, hits reverse to close it on all to close it up. Now, when you do it the manual way, you're in charge on if the buttonhole closes or not, how long the buttonhole is going to be. You're completely in charge of the machine doesn't really regulate that like it does with this buttonhole foot. This one's always going to give you the best looking, most repeatable buttonholes here using this foot. Let me show you a little bit about how satin stitches are stitched out on the machine. Satin stitches are stitches that are very close together, real tight, dense stitches. So um, I'm in my sat one of my satin stitch menus and if I pick, um, I'm looking for something that just kind of has a repeating pattern. So maybe um, maybe this stitch here. Um, so you can tell it's it's really tight together stitches. I can stitch a little bit out so you can see what it looks like um, when we stitch this out normally. Okay, so I just did a little bit there so you can see um, kind of how it looks like normally. So now we have the ability to change the length of the pattern. So when I look at this on the screen, it says 20.5 where your stitch length is. Well, 20.5 isn't the stitch length because that would be an incredibly long stitch length. That's the actual length of the pattern. So one of these triangles here is 20.5 millimeters. Um, if I make it longer, you're going to see it grow on the screen, but the neat thing is if I elongate the pattern, it's still a satin stitch. So it's still just as dense. I haven't changed the fact that this is a satin stitch. Um, it's really great 
because you can really fine tune the stitch exactly how you want it. On other machines, when you make the stitch length longer, all it's gonna do is spread out the stitches and it's no longer gonna look like a satin stitch, it's gonna look like something totally different. And I love on the screen how you get an exact representation of what you're gonna get when you stitch it out. I'll show you. Okay, so we elongated the pattern and see, I'll show you how accurate that is. See how perfect that is? But yeah, so we took the pattern and we made it longer now. Now, what I wanna show you though, the reason why we're doing this is, I've made the pattern longer, but what if I needed to make it less dense? Maybe I'm using a fatter embroidery thread, like a 30 weight embroidery thread, and the stitch length is just a little bit too close together for doing that. So then, let me kind of go back to normal. Um, and you'll always know when you're back to normal because when you leave normal, it turns yellow. When you go back to normal, it turns white, so you get the little number indicator. So now, I want to change the density. This little icon in between the plus and the minus, if you touch that, it switches it to an actual stitch length icon. So now, if I make my stitch length longer, you can see how it's coming apart kind of on the screen, showing you that, yeah, you're really spreading those stitches apart, and this is what it's gonna look like when you sew it. So this is how you can change the density of the stitch. Now you'll notice that on my, my width here, there's also a little zigzag button in the middle and that changes what these buttons do. But I'm actually gonna show you that with a different stitch um, to give you a better idea of what it is. It's a stitch positioning feature. So let's go in and we're gonna grab um, something from our quilting menu, a little applique stitch. Maybe this one, the little pin applique stitch. So now this stitch is being um, stitched out way kinda on the right hand side of the foot. Right, way over on the side. What I can do is I can touch my zigzag little icon and it changes it from being a width adjustment to a stitch repositioning. So now I can move that stitch around. So if I wanted that stitch to stitch out more in the middle of my foot without actually altering the stitch, that's what I'm doing. I'm moving it to a new position because I like to gauge it better more in the center of my foot. Now I didn't change the width of the stitch at all. You can see on the screen, it's just repositioning it over to different, different points. If I wanted to change the width, then I can switch it back to a width and then I can use those buttons to alter the overall width of the stitch. Okay, I wanna show you a little bit about um, applique on this machine. The reason why I'm showing you applique on this machine is because this machine applique is awesome. It's one of the best machines for applique. The reason being is that when you select the needle down on this machine, what it does is it stops with the needle down, but it also raises the foot up automatically each time you stop sewing. Quilters absolutely love this. I like this feature. It's a great feature, but when you're doing applique, it is an incredible incredibly easy way to do applique. So let me show you a little bit on how this is done. I got just a, a piece of fabric on here. That's a little bit of pattern that we can kind of trace around as if we're appliquing it on. So I picked my little pin applique stitch. And then when I stop, see how the foot jumps up? and I can turn my fabric, go the next direction, and very precisely get, stay perfectly on track. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom the camera in a little bit so you can see just what I'm doing. Just so you can really get a sense on just how easy and precise this is. So it's very easy with the fa feet to kind of follow a line. Um, Foss feet are actually designed really well where um, even on their standard foot, they make the front of their foot clear so you get good visibility. So now when I came to the edge of my applique and I stopped, the machine pivoted up and I can turn my corners very, very quick and easy without having to reach behind my machine and constantly grab and turn levers. See how fast I'm appliquing this? And I'll show you the precision too, because not only am I going really fast, but it's nailing it exactly where it needs to be.
And there's a lot of different sti different stitches you can use for applique. I one of my favorites is this little applique pin stitch. And because of the Foff's upper feed system on this machine, it pulls the fabric through very evenly and very precise. So you're not getting, when you're working with different layers of fabric, you're not getting those little puckers or twists or turns. So let's go ahead and use my scissors here. So let me back that up so you can get the camera to focus on it. See how well I went around that and how fast? I mean, I was barely even looking and it's got on all of its little points perfect. So appliques, because of the whole, how the needle up down and how the foot raises up automatically makes for real, really precise, really fast, really easy applique work. Since we're talking about applique and how the foot raises up automatically, I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about the foot tap feature because I don't think I touched on it yet earlier. So the foot tap will also put the needle down and raise the foot automatically. So you have two different ways you can do it. So anytime you hit the foot control, the foot of course drops down to start sewing. But if I'm sewing normal where the needle always stops up, now if I tap my foot control, it will put the needle down and raise the foot automatically for me each time I do that. See that? So even though I don't have it selected on the machine to stop needle down, it still is going to give me that pivot and turn feature. Now, if I have needle down selected on the screen, of course, it's going to do that for me each time I stop sewing. But the neat thing is, if I have needle down selected and it's raising the foot for me automatically, again, if I tap my foot control, it'll do the opposite of whatever I have set. So if I tap my foot control now, it's going to stop with the needle in the up position and it'll put the foot down. So a uh, real, real nice way that works. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into embroidery now because this machine is an awesome embroidery machine. So I went ahead and sl I slid off the accessory box and set it aside. I took my embroidery unit now and I'm going to attach it to the machine and it just clicks right into the machine like so. Now, to set up for embroidery, you want to remove your regular sewing foot and your machine came with this little guy, this little foot here, um, little sensormatic foot is what they call it. This is the foot that you use for embroidery and it just pops right on to the machine. Now there is another embroidery option that doesn't come with the machine as far as feet go. It's the, six, the Dynamic 6D foot for embroidery. Um, that's a great, great foot to use for embroidery. The difference is this foot hovers just slightly above the fabric, which is great and it does really nice, beautiful work. The Dynamic 60 spring foot, what it does is it pushes down every time it forms a stitch. And so what they found with this is that that foot works the best over many different kinds of fabric. Because if you put, maybe you put something quilted in there, or you put a dish towel in there, something with nap that's fluffy, um, this isn't always the best foot. Uh, that foot, the dynamic foot, will push down any fluff every time it forms a stitch. Most of the time, though, you're working on just flat cottons, and this foot works great for that. So just make sure you pop off the A foot, you put on the proper foot. If you do use the Dynamic 60 spring foot, you have to actually let the machine know you want to use that foot because the foot automatically goes to the proper height. So that's when you go into the tools menu and you select that you want to use um, that foot for your um, for your embroidery. So where it says dynamic spring foot 60, you would check that box. Now the machine knows that is the foot you want to use when you embroider. But otherwise, the foot that comes with the machine works beautifully. So now we've attached the embroidery unit. We've taken off the standard foot. Um, we can toggle over since we've been in sewing mode. Um, we can touch the, the little embroidery hoop icon and it's going to tell us that the first thing it needs to do is calibrate the embroidery arm. So we just hit OK. The arm is going to make a little bit of noise and move all around. That's all normal. It just centers itself. Now, if you had the embroidery unit on when you turned on the machine, it automatically goes to this screen. But we were in sewing mode, so you can toggle between sewing and embroidery there. Now, when you do do sewing, 
and if you ha have the embroidery unit on, um, you actually have to unclick it and slide it out about an inch because it needs to be off the machine. Um, you don't have to remove it completely, but you just have to move it off a tiny bit. And so, but we're going to play around in our embroidery screen. So I'm going to zoom in now on the screen so that we can talk a little bit about what we see and how we can edit and customize right on the screen. Okay, so this is the embroidery screen. This is where we bring in our embroidery designs and kind of do our layout. So the machine comes with a lot of embroidery designs built into the machine and also embroidery fonts built into the machine. So we'll play with those to, um, to add to the machine. It's simple. It's got a USB port on the machine, on the side of the machine. The machine comes with a flash drive. You can just throw designs on it throw it in there and you're, you're up and running. I get the question about formats a lot. What format should I use? Um, the machines, the FOF machines are great because they read most formats without having to convert them. Um, so if you had like a brother machine or something and you had some other wompy format, uh, the odds are the machine's gonna accept it and run it without any conversion. Um, but the recommended format, if I was to choose one for this machine on a list, I would choose VP3 every time. It's one of the best formats uh, for the for for FOF machines to run. It's their newest format, gives you the truest colors, best designs, beautiful. The machine does come with a piece of software that you can install um, on your on your computer. It's actually a free, the software is a free download from FOFUSA.com. Um, and it's a, a great program that you can put onto your computer and it lets you view and organize your design files. It'll also let you convert format if you wanted to. Or if you're working with some really old design files, you can add those really nice jump stitch cut commands because this machine will cut the jump stitches when it's embroidering. Um, so to get more em more embroidery designs in the machine, you just put them on the flash drive, stick them in the USB port. But to get to the built-in designs in the machine, you, you get to them just like you got to your sewing stitches in your little menus here. So now we can scroll down and you can see some of the great designs that are built into the machine, some real wonderful things. So if we wanted to play around with some of these designs, I'm not going to scroll through all of them, you can select a design just by touching it and it brings it onto the screen. And you can touch and drag and move and move it all around. Um, the machine has the ability to use a variety of different hoops. And so you have a little hoop icon here where you can select um, whatever size hoop that you want to work with. And that's represented by this little box here. So we can take our design, maybe we can move it down get it placed where we want it. If we hit this button here, it, this button always centers it right in the middle of the hoop. Um, if you hit your rotation button, you can drag your rotation right here. And you can see just how responsive it is. And then if you hit the center button here, it's going to move it by, um, by 90 degrees every time that you hit that button. So, but let's go back to the movement. I'll take this, kind of drag it down here. Let's kind of square it back up a little bit. So now what I can do is, yeah, that's a pretty design, but I want to I want to add a little bit more to it. I want something else. I want some fonts. So let's go ahead and go back to our menu button. We're going to go find some embroidery fonts, and we're going to write a name with it. I kind of like these little curly Q fonts. Um, and it comes up just like a, just like a typewriter. I've got a keyboard, so I'm going to write my name. I get uppercase and lowercase again. I can change it. If I wrote a name and I felt like I made a mistake, I can use this little delete button to delete it. So I did it all uppercase. If I want to switch to lowercase, I hit this button right here and I do lowercase. If I want to put a symbol with it, like an at symbol for an email address, that's there. If I need to do numbers, that's there. So then I wrote my little name. I got it on the screen. Now what it did is it kind of picked a color for me automatically based on the design I had on there. Um, so it kind of tries to match it for you, but you can put in whatever color you want for your name. And then I can take my name and I can scroll it around and I can line it up wherever I want. If I wanted, if I felt like I needed more designs in there, I can go back and I can find some other little designs maybe to add to the screen. Um, see if I can find something kind of small. Yeah, these are tiny little designs, I think. Yeah, so I can take these little designs and, and bring them onto the screen there. So that's how I kind of do my customizing, my layout right on the screen. It's really, really easy. When I'm ready to embroider, I have to put on um, an embroidery hoop. 
um, and it knows I don't have one on right now, so it told me, make sure you put on the correct hoop. So I actually have one here, so let me slide this hoop on. And then it, rec it tells me what color I should use first, my recommended thread color. And it's a real true color on the screen. It probably doesn't come through quite as true as on camera, um, but you get a really nice um, color there. So now right here, we're in our screen now where we actually are gonna embroider this out. If I hit my start button, it would just simply start embroidering. Or I can go and look around at a few things. Um, I can select this box here which would do a basting stitch all around the outside of my design that I can pull out later. So if I only hooped my stabilizer and I want to put a piece of fabric on top, um, I can use this basting stitch to kind of tack that fabric down if it wasn't hooped. But I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. This right here is I can hit this button if I wanted to do the whole design in one color. So I took out all the thread color changes. It's gonna do it completely one color. And I really like that when you touch that button, you can kind of see how that changes on the screen to show you that I've taken out all the color stops. It's all gonna be done um, one color. This right here is how I can jump ahead stitches. See how that little X is changing on the screen? Um, so I can jump ahead to maybe get to a certain part of the design that I need to, or if you're embroidering, and let's say your embroidery thread breaks for whatever reason, um, I use this when I change my thread. I always back up about 20 stitches before I start. That way I, I make sure there's never a gap there. This tells me down here that I'm on thread color number one. There's 272 stitches in thread color number one. The whole design has this many stitches in it, so um, 14,000 stitches to do this whole combination that I've put together on the screen. This is my tension, so um, the default, it's always gonna be pretty accurate, the default, but if you wanted to change it off of the default, you could, and it only does it as you're embroidering, so if you came back later, you didn't, you didn't permanently change anything. Okay, let me show you the positioning feature on this machine. It, I'm so glad they added this to this machine because it is one of my favorite features in embroidery. It's how you can take a design and perfectly line it up on your fabric exactly 100% perfect. So we got our embroidery design on our screen. I can touch this little icon here, which brings me into my positioning feature here. So um, the positioning feature works uh, by using step one and step two. So we're gonna touch number one first, which is gonna give me this little green cross. So what we can do with this little green cross on the screen is we can put it on a, a part of our design that we want to line up. So if we needed to line something up, maybe perfectly on a pocket or a quilt block or something, we can take this. So let's take this and we will put this maybe on the very top of this J, maybe um, right, you know, right about there. So now what I always recommend doing is you can use the zoom in feature to make sure that you are 100% precise. So you can click the little magnifying glass here and then I'm gonna touch this icon here because it's gonna zoom to, um, to right to where my little cross is. And you can see I got really close, but I'm off my stitching just a tiny bit. So it zooms in really close view of my stitches. So now I can take my little cross, I can put it right perfectly there on the edge of my J. I'm gonna hit my number two button, which is gonna lock it in. So now what's happening is that little cross I put it on the top of the J where I need to align. That's represented now by my needle. So let me change the view of the camera so you can see the fabric. So now I've already embroidered something on here, but that's just for demonstration purposes. So now if I needed to take this little J, top of the J, and let's say I needed to place it right here, right on this guy here, and that's where I needed it to embroider. So now I would just take my design, move it around on my screen, and get it moved over right where I wanted it to be. Just about using my little fine, I have a little fine tuner on the screen when I get close. I can get really close to where I wanna be. Then let's check it, yep, perfect. So now if I was to embroider this out right now, I would have my top of my J perfectly embroider in that location. So now that I got that set and I know that's perfect, if I wanted to go ahead and check other points, 
Let me turn this back so you can see the screen. I could go ahead and go back to step number one and I can start moving around and maybe checking um, different points to see where different points of my design are gonna line up. Just to make sure that I got my alignment right. This is the most precise alignment program in the entire industry. You get designs placed 100% perfect to the stitch on your fabric. It's great, especially great if you're trying to line up two different designs or if you're trying to do an endless design. It takes all the guesswork out. It's not a generic box around your design. You can get it 100% placed perfectly maybe in your quilt block where you're not you didn't embroider it and realize you were a little bit off. And if you're a person like me that's really particular, um, I hate when things are a little bit off. I want them to be exactly perfect. And this gets you exactly 100% perfect every single time. Okay, so let me show you a little, a uh, few other icons on the screen. Um, so we, we talked about our positioning um, program here. Um, this is our zoom in and out. So we can zoom into really close views of our design just for alignment purposes. Now down here is a little hoop symbol when we're in this screen. This is all the different positions that we can put the hoop in when, when we're embroidering. So um, current position is where it's currently embroidering. Park position is where it kind of moves the whole embroidery frame out of the way off to the side. Um, bobbin position is one that you might use. So if you are embroidering on your machine and your machine tells you that you're running low on bobbin thread, which it will tell you, you can go um, hit that button, moves the hoop out of the way where you can change your bobbin without having to remove the hoop from the machine. So bobbin position is great. Cut position is the machine cuts the jump stitches automatically, but there's times that you turn off the automatic jump stitch cuts. So you can bring the whole design forward to you so that you can go in and trim any little hairs or little jump stitches um, that you need to trim there. Um, and then center position just brings you right to the dead center of the hoop. So that's all the different positions when you're embroidering um, done by that there. The spool of thread, it's kind of probably what you think it is, it's where all your thread colors are laid out. If you need to jump ahead to a thread color, you can just touch the color that you want to be on and it'll take you ahead to that thread color. Or if you just want to see what your layout is, um, you can get all your colors kind of ready and laid out ahead of time so you know what's going to be asked um, for you to, to change to. And then the bottom button just takes you back to the embroidery edit screen, which was the first screen we were in where we did all of our, our kind of our layout of our design. So that's kind of the embroidery mode. Embroidery is really easy. It's not very complicated. Uh, people who don't own embroidery machines always think, oh, it's so complicated. It's going to be so hard. It is one of the easiest things you can do with the machine. The machine does all the work in embroidery. You just tell it, you know, do this picture or, you know, lay it out here and, and just hit the start button. When anytime you're ready to start embroidering, you just hit the start button and the machine's going to start embroidering. Now, a couple things you want to make sure, always make sure you have the correct hoop on. The machine will know if you have the wrong hoop on and it'll tell you, put on the correct hoop. You're trying to use the wrong hoop. Other biggies is when you embroider, most of the time you are using um, a 40 weight rayon or polyester embroidery thread. Embroidery thread is different than regular sewing thread. So embroidery thread on the top. Now you don't use that same embroidery thread on the bottom. You use bobbin thread on the bottom. Bobbin thread is not just bobbin thread. It's a, it's a lightweight thread meant for embroidery. Me personally, um, we use pre-wound bobbins around here in the store for embroidery. Um, we use that almost exclusively do we use pre-wound bobbins. Now, some pre-wound bobbins are terrible, <laughs> terrible. Um, so the brand that we use and the brand that I would recommend really across the board to anybody because we've experimented with lots of different bobbin threads. The brand is Filtech, F-I-L-T-E-C, I believe. Um, and those are some of the best pre-wound bobbins you can buy. They work really consistently well, so and that's what we exclusively use in this store. So I, I kind of hope uh, you enjoyed learning about the Creative 3.0. Our store is actually opening up, so I'm going to have to wrap up this video because people are showing up. Um, but for more videos, uh, you can visit our website, villagesewing.com, um, and you'll also, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see our links to some of our other, our other videos. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you go to villagesewing.com, you'll have chapter breakdowns of the different videos we do, so you don't have to watch it in one long length like you do on YouTube.